This video will show you how to uninstall and install the Brompton Electric controller. First of all, ensure that you have all the tools required to perform the controller unit replacement. You will need a T20 Torx key, a T10 Torx key, a T9 Torx key, a T8 Torx key, a 4mm T-shaped Allen key, a 2.5mm T-shaped Allen key, a small flat-headed screwdriver and a cable cutter. Also make sure to have all the components required to perform the replacement before you carry out the work. You will need new fittings for the front carrier mount block, two washers, two screws and one plate, the replacement controller unit, the two side covers for the replacement unit, plus the two T20 self-tapping screws, one luggage mounting block cover plus the four T8 self-tapping screws to fit it to the block, one P-clip plus the 2.5mm Allen head screw and washer, connector cover plus its spring, and zip ties. It's worth noting that many of the fittings can be taken off the old, broken unit and used for the new unit with no negative effect. This can include the two side covers for the replacement unit and fittings, one luggage mounting block cover plus the fittings, one P-clip plus the 2.5mm Allen head screw and washer, connector cover plus its return spring, and the front carrier block unit. Before physically removing the controller from the mainframe, all of the electrical connectors will need to be disconnected. You will need to disconnect the bottom bracket sensor cable, motor cable and front lamp. Disconnect the controller from the bottom bracket sensor cable. First, turn the bike upside down. Undo the screws from the bottom bracket junction box cover. Use a T20 Torx key for the big screw, a T10 Torx key for the three small screws, and lift the cover carefully without removing the white seal. Pull the connector gently from the junction box and disconnect the sensor cable from the controller cable. Turn the bicycle back around. Proceed with cutting all of the zip ties, holding the sensor loom to the gear cable outer. Undo the cable gatherer to release the cable completely. Take care when doing this. To do so, push the loop of the cable gatherer from the underside upwards. Then feed the controller cable through all the frame loops. Disconnect the motor cable from the controller. To do so, fully unscrew the connector closest to the wheel by turning it clockwise. Once it's loose, carefully pull the two sides apart. Finally, undo the P-clip here on the front fork using a 2.5mm Allen key. Keep the P-clip, washer and screw. Now, the controller is completely disconnected from the motor and the bottom bracket sensor. Disconnect the front lamp from the controller. Undo the screw from the right hand side cover using a T20 Torx key. Undo the cable clamp using a T10 Torx key. Take the top grommet cable and gently pull it away from the control cavity. This will allow you to access the lamp connector. Disconnect the front light cable from the controller. Now the controller is disconnected from all electronic components and is safe to remove from the mainframe. Undo the screw on the left hand side using a T20 Torx key. Once both side covers have been removed, the controller unit will come loose. Now you can proceed to remove the luggage mount block. First, undo the four screws and remove the cover using a T8 Torx key. If you have difficulty accessing the mounting screws of the cover, it's worth removing the spring-loaded connector cover. This will help you to gain easier access to the bottom two screws. Push down the cover and release the right side. Use a flat-headed screwdriver to pry the cover away from the unit. Release the left side carefully as the spring might pop out. Once removed, you'll be able to access the rest of the screws. To remove the front carrier block mount cover, lift and angle slightly. Now, the controller unit can be moved down enough to gain access to the front carrier block mount fittings. Unscrew the two M5 by 16 socket head cap screws using a 4mm Allen key. Once loose, the whole unit can be separated from the front of the main frame. Installing the controller. Take the front carrier block mount and assemble one screw with one anti-rotation washer into the plate. Fit another washer and screw into the block but do not mount to the frame yet. The controller unit will need to be pre-assembled into the luggage block before it's fitted to the frame. If you fit the mount carrier block into the frame first, you will not be able to then fit the controller. Attach the whole assembly to the front frame. Start tightening the top screw 
using a 4mm Allen key. Then, slide down the controller unit to access the bottom screw. Tighten the lower 4mm screw. Torque both bolts to 4Nm. Slide the controller unit up and back into its place in the luggage block. To secure this unit, fit the mount block unit cover. Then, fit the four self-tapping screws using a T8 Torx key. If removed in previous stages of this replacement, fit the connector cover. Pre-insert the short leg of the spring in the locator of the plate. Carefully clip the right hand side of the plate and the located spring over the controller's right mounting lug. While holding the spring in place, locate the plate's left borehole in the controller's mounting lug. With a small flathead screwdriver, push the long leg of the spring over the lip and into the cavity of the controller unit. If done correctly, the cover should now snap back over the connector with no assistance. Refit the left hand controller panel using the T20 Torx key. Before fitting the right cover, locate the controller and front light cable in the controller's grooves. Connect the front lamp's two pin connector to the controller's counterpart. The connector can then be located in the top right hand side of the cavity. The rubber seals on the cables should locate firmly into the ribbed exit points of the controller. Then, fit the clamp to ensure that the cable is secure using a T10 Torx key. Connect the right hand cover using a T20 Torx key. Connect the controller to the other elements of the electric bike. Screw the P-clip into the fork to secure the motor cable. Fit the clip to the cable first. Then, screw it into the fork using a 2.5mm Allen key. Connect the motor cable to the controller. Find the two white arrows on both halves. Check that both connectors are clear of debris. Make sure they are aligned before connecting both cables. To lock the two parts together, push the silver ring on the lower connector up and screw it in clockwise. Connect the controller cable to the bottom bracket sensor. Route the controller cable through the front mainframe cable gatherer. Route the cable through the cable gatherer. Route the cable through the rear frame gatherer. Turn the bicycle back around. Connect the bottom bracket connector to the controller. To keep the cables tidy when refitting to the junction box, the cables can be gently twisted. Make sure not to overturn and put undue pressure on the wires. Place the connector into the slotted gap in the junction box. Locate the sensor cable in between its various pinch points and place the grommet on the lip of the junction box. With the other hand, take the cable from the controller and locate its rubber seal in the exit point of the junction box. The cable will then locate around the fitting for the top of the junction box. Once everything is sitting in the right place, proceed with the fitting of the junction box cover. Make sure the white seal is located in place. Use the T20 Torx key for the central screw and a T10 Torx key for the rest of the screws. Close the cable gatherer. Finally, use zip ties to secure all the cables. The first zip tie must be located just behind the rear frame cable gatherer, attached to hold rear light loom, control cable and the lowest cable. Fit the next one around 3 to 4 centimeters further and work up the cable in the same increments. Before delivering the bike to the customer, connect the bike to the diagnostic tool. It's also recommended testing the bike to confirm that the issue has been solved.